Hello, everybody. So these aren't. Uh, Is this thing on? Hello, everybody. They're not. They're fans. They're not journalists. Yeah, I know. Yeah, now, we now we can just like, now we can relax. The and if he's been giving us some fucking harder hitting questions, of course. <laughs> they will too. So if you have a question, just raise your hand up. The real yeah, questions. Who wants to begin? Who wants to start off? You have your phone. Number. You in the front. Yeah. 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 Microphone yeah. in your face. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's like the craziest or funniest thing that's happened to you on tour? Oh God, that's oh, I can't answer that. The tour itself is funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, maybe end yeah. of the paper, but tell the truth. <laughs> we did a show in Vegas, actually just quite recently, and it was a. Uh, it was in the Mandalay Bay, and it was a pool party. Yeah. And that was actually hilarious, right? Because we were, we basically had the stage, right, which is there, and then the pool is all the way around. So the front row are basically up to their knees in water, and, and it kind of just progresses like that. But I went, I normally in one song, I normally go out into the audience, into the crowd, so I'm kind of walking through, wading through the water, having a crack, and I just feel his arms coming around behind me. This lad, he was hammered. <laughs> right, just lifting me. He wanted to lift me up. He, in his mind, he was going to lift me up in the showers and it was going to be awesome. Right? <laughs> but he fucking lifted me up and he went straight back. And he, he fucking body slammed me right on the, on the ground. Um, that was pretty funny. It was pretty funny for everyone else. It was hilarious. Crap for me. There's always pretty much every show something mental goes down, you know, yeah. uh, that we're always laughing about. And it's usually things that happen on stage when, you know, nobody else knows what happens. We do them and we laugh at it to each other and just you've got to carry on and smile and pretend like it never happened. And there's only thousands of people. You're also there. always aware of the cameras on you all the time, so you've got to be careful about the old fuck off you. you know? Yeah, yeah. So when we're slagging things are going on, you have to be really careful because someone's picking up. You know, I just see him saying, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Particularly now with, uh, with Periscope, you know what I mean? Yes. He's always on the bloody thing and he never fucking tells me. I you know. know, that's right. But but you have now I have to make an announcement. So I'm like, okay, we are live now. Now everybody, okay? Just let you know. Watch your P's and Q's. You know it's like with Irish people, you're just joking sometimes, but anyone else could take lots of offence by something we'd say just in the dressing room having the crack and yeah. then something happens. So we have a rule, if I turn it on, I have to make a big announcement to everybody. By the way, this is love. And are any of you guys on Twitter and Facebook? Anyone? Yeah? I suppose it's, it's interesting though, do you guys actually look after your own Yeah, Twitter? yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if they send you a message, you, you, you know, yeah, 100%. Why, why that's really probably important. Probably to a fault. That's yeah. a good question. Why, why it's really important for us, because the culture online, you know when it's actually a standard answer from someone else. So. What we do is we, we do have, obviously the record labels do, um, <laughs> see, there's all the DMs, this yeah. is Twitter, we use it on our phones. All yeah, we do. Well, I mean, we try our best, obviously there's thousands coming in, and we try our best to answer as many, and what does happen, people do copy and paste those and put them around, so you know it's us. Yeah. And I think you know by the tone as well, and over time you get to know the characters behind, so people know it's us by based on what we say. You will see the odd post from our, what we call our headquarters, which is the label, basically, it, we only let them do posts when it's based on things like the live stream, for example, that we're doing tomorrow. We just don't have time to do things like that. Yeah. But we do have time to answer people. We try to spend our time best spent talking to people directly, rather than the bullshit stuff of just putting a, a link up for people know, about the yeah. live stream. Or just retweeting some that's, that's tweet. And when we periscope, you know it's us, because I'm holding the camera and like, there's all of us there on the, the screen, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I love periscope for, because it's real and you cannot fake who we are. It's impossible. I mean, look at the heads on us. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, have a look there, go and just like scroll, that's just since this morning and just... This is your own, this is uh, at Danny the script, is it? That's right? just Sorry, that's this porn page. That's the porn page. You don't want to go on that page. Just, like, just oh my that's, god. It doesn't stop. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. What about the people tweeting in different languages? Um, you just have a nice... <laughs> you have, yeah. I'll read one for you now. Yeah. You have a nice hairstyle. What's the name of your style? I will use that style for me. Please tell me what is your name style. That's, that's actually from you. Yes! <laughs> Do you have any more questions? Raise your hand. Um, anyway, there you go. Oh, sorry. Uh, what's the best advice you've ever gotten? As a musician? Yeah. Oh, oh that's a tricky one. Um, I think my, it was from my dad, actually. and it kind of, It's mixed with a, a musician and as a person. He always said to me that, you know, no matter how high it goes, or how big it gets for you, always remain humble. And if you want a cup of tea, ask them where the kettle is and go make it yourself. You know, he always, and he said to me, always leave a door open so that when you walk back into a room, people are going to welcome you, you know, because he said, it's, it's nice on the way up, but you're going to meet everybody on the way back down again. And for me, that was the, the best advice because I've always carried that with me. Wherever I go, I, I either make the tea or, or Daniel make the tea. You know? He makes a good cup of tea. Make your own career after the band. I make your own fucking tea. Um, I, I, think, I think if for if it's towards any band, anything in the performing arts at all, I think the one thing is daunting is when you're spending all the time bloody rehearsing. And you don't know what you're doing sometimes. You're in a, in a room on your own, sometimes thinking, what the fuck am I doing? Um, 
we are proof of years and years and years of preparation. Because a lot of people say, we're very lucky, the yeah. band. <laughs> but then, let me explain what luck is for a second. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. If you're not prepared for the opportunity when it comes around, you're not fucking lucky. All right, yeah. simple. You have to be prepared for every time. So for us, it's very important that you put in those hours. Like, for example, our show lasts about two hours. We'll fucking practice eight hours a day for two hours. It's ridiculous. It just sounds ridiculous, but it's so many nuances, so many things, so many things we want to do and put on that it's got to be just uh, second nature to us. You know, we can't be thinking about our instruments. We can't be thinking about what's coming out of our faces. You know, we just got to be doing it. Yeah. Um, the only way to do that is by is we talk to the point that's actually hurting our heads. I mean, we'd be in London four or five weeks before we even go on stage. We're every day down there rehearsal, rehearsal. It's seven to eight hours a day, as Mark said, and we and we run the set when we have it ready three times a day, that's three shows in a day. We'll do that for another week before we even go on the road. So by the time we get on the road to do a show, that one, that what, 90 minute show for us is like, it goes like that because we've been rehearsing every day. So like Mark says, it's literally, you, you cannot practice enough. You can't, you know. You just You've got to prepare for the opportunity, you really do. Anybody else, question? Raise your hand, please. You. <laughs> Madame. Um, do you have a big input in Everything in our yeah. in the like videos and stuff. Yeah. We're yeah. a bloody nightmare to to the point where it's we are we're a nightmare. We um we, we have to be across absolutely everything. You know even up superheroes down to where it was going to be filmed, how many crew we were bringing down with us, what the vibe of it was going to be like. You know, I'd love you to see backstage or something like that because we're the only ones can want to go down into the middle of South Africa into a township. Yeah. Everyone else is being hired to do it. Who doesn't want to be there? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is our idea. We want to go down there and do it. The rest of them are like, eh, camera and all. Frank's up on, um, on Man on the Wire. I wish that we didn't have the input in that video because I because <laughs> I talked myself into that. I really did. I am. Um, you guys did the, the, all the stunts that were not stunts. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. actually you. That's that's it. Was, it was not a green screen. No green screen of all. Yeah, Thirteen, all. 13 stories, or sorry, eleven. It, it keeps going up a story every time I tell it. It was eleven stories. Don't ruin a good story with the truth. Yeah, exactly. So it was 11 stories up in the air. Um, you know, I kind of when we were talking about the video, I was thinking it'd be amazing if I actually did it. And he's like, "Go on, I bet you're not going to do it." So I will, I will do it. And um, I, lo and behold, I kind of hadn't. I put it out in my mind, and then we flew to South Africa to shoot it. And I walked down on the day, and I seen there was a fella testing the rope, and he was walking out, and I literally walked out, and I was like, I'm "Not doing it." I'm not doing it. It was really like, scary. seriously. It was I presume really he had a, had a thing. Well, it was a harness, yeah, a harness that was on the nape of my neck. So it was, well, I had a, like a, it was like a jacket kind of looking thing, and then I put the jacket over it. But there's one wire that goes from from your neck to another wire, which is above you. So I'm, I'm walk, I really am walking on the wire, but there's like some slack, so it's taking about forty pounds of me weight maybe. And at any point walking. when you were filming, did you slip? I did, yeah, yeah, I slipped once, um, and it was the same as if I hadn't got a wire on. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> my feet, you know, I don't know, it's really hard to explain, but my feet. Out of my heel, it, I literally turned prehistoric and grew another thing out of my heel. Because if you look in the video, there's a, there's, you wonder how they look like monkey feet. Do you know what I mean? My hat is like that. Feet just grab it. Like talons <laughs> grabbing onto the wire like a bird. Like a bird thing. But um, yeah, I kind of wish we didn't have that much input. But again, you have to suffer for your art, you know? We're living in a day and age where you have to have videos that people want to pass on to each other, you know, viral videos. So we put all the time and attention into, into that kind of ideas, you know? And, um, for better or for worse. Okay, we've got time for two more questions, so if you've been reluctant, now's your time. This man with the plastic. Um, are there any Irish bands or singers around that you think would eventually be big enough to sell out Crow um, Yeah, I think Walking on Cars have loads of promise. I think they're really good. Hopefully they'll deliver this year. I know they're working hard. Um, but I think uh, there's people like the Veronicas, there's, there's loads of people out there that I think um, are, are coming up and I don't know look again we never thought we'd sell out Crow Park the, the weird thing about being Irish and being in the band is that you get you get knocked down an awful lot here when you're in the band it's a really tough country to convince that you're you are the right band for the job you know but I think when you do convince the public it's the best country yeah it suddenly becomes the best country when you are the band that you've convinced the public and that that's the difference you know but it's a matter of that little moment of just getting it over the tipping point. And the only way to do that is music. It's the only way. We've realized over the years that there's no magic formula, there's no gimmick, there's nothing you can do, there's no fucking music video you can do that. You know, even if you have been about to cut the rope and you'd have fell, we still wouldn't have gone viral. You know, there's nothing you can do. The only thing will sustain you is a great song. So I think no matter what, 
Um, Hosey is a great example. Um, what a song, you know, that's come out. Code Lambo, great example. Code Line, a great example. Yeah, I think there is band. really great Irish talent. I think what's more important this year than, than ever is that Irish bands are not afraid to expand their sound. Years ago, Irish bands just yeah. wanted to be rock all the time. We've now proven that you don't have to be just that. You can be whatever you bloody well want and be Irish. Irish is not just a sound, you know, it's not a sound. We have a passport that has a bloody musical instrument on it for a reason. Every other country has a shield, a weapon. We've got fucking music. That's what we've got, and that's what we use. So that's a broad, that's a broad statement. So the, for me, I'm so glad the youth are trying different things. There's boys rapping over here, girls rapping over here. There's things that you, you're just not expecting coming out of Ireland. So I don't know what's to come, but I wasn't expecting Hosey. I really wasn't. I thought he was brilliant. Okay, one more question, anybody? You've done. Um, is there anyone you'd like to collab with, or has anyone asked to collab with you and you said no? Yeah. <laughs> a few, actually, yeah. Yeah, many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jarrell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, had we, of break we, even even we had a remix of Break Even sent to us by Jarrow, and to be honest, it was. I just laughed my ass off. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? Why, why was it so bad? He sped up Break Even, so I was like, what you know, really about Break Even? Yeah, it was just so and I was like, weird. he just lost the point of the song, and he was rapping about all this stuff that had nothing to do with the song, so. Things like about drug dealing, about breaking in, <laughs> and then occasionally, you know, occasionally there's the odd advert that asks you to put a song on an advert or something like that, and it's like DFS sofa. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, you can't use for the first time for that. No, it just so fucking work. You know? So there's loads of things like that that we do say no to. But then again, the modern era just tells you that you've got to, you've got to try in order to get your band seen. You've got to be careful. Like the voice, for example, and um, doing the voice was a, a pragmatic move for us because. We, we're in a day and age where if you don't uh, uh, bring in media a little bit, if you don't be the band that, if you think you're too cool for school basically, you're never going to get noticed. And this is the problem I find for a lot of bands, too busy wearing their shades and smoking and hiding in a fucking corner. You're not going to get noticed. Get out there, take them off, meet people, be nice, get out to the world. And uh, well, no, we found him on the corner, don't worry. Um, but as a, as a thing, what I will say is that when you get out there and, and just be honest, get your music, music first all the time. Embrace them digital medias, embrace the TV medias, embrace them all out there because believe me, you need all the exposure you can get. Yeah. get. Just be good when you do it. Very good, thanks very much guys for that. Thank you guys. This is a very special meet and greet for all of you guys because we have a little surprise for the band. Ooh. From oh. their record label. Oh. Ah, ah. joint no birthday right. cards. Awesome. Give you some nice oh, wow. That's your big cheer for the script. Platinum selling album. Thanks to you guys for buying it. Yeah, so yes. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what we get from there. Yeah, we get everyone here with that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah.